And um, uh, so, you know, I, what I said to my church, and I'll just say this, you know, um, you know, we're a bunch of you young people in here, you know, in a few years, it's, it's amazing. You know, you got that 10 year window and, you know, all of a sudden somebody that is now 25 or somebody that was 18 is 28 and, you know, and, 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 you know, they've got kids now. And um, so, you know, we've, you know, we want to encourage the young people to instill these things in your children. You're going to have to think that way. But, but also tonight, we've got so many young people tonight that, you know, I think a lot of this is really going to be directed very directly to them. And uh, it's aimed at the young men tonight, although, the, the, again, there will be some things that will be very applicable in both directions. So look at Psalm 101. Psalm 101. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Uh, the, the thing I want to talk about first tonight is uh, just this thought of, uh, you know, for young men is learn when not to look. Uh, don't look. Don't look. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Uh, look at Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. You know, our society is, is very visual and more so than ever. And, you know, you, you know, people have got their phones and, and, uh, and you know, that you, you see the billboards, you know, the billboards used to just be a picture. And, you know, now that, now that, now the billboards are a screen and, uh, you know, everywhere you go, uh, you've got that stuff. Um, you know, what you, what you let in the eye gate gets in your heart. And it really begins to shape who you are. And I mean, it does it e even if you don't want it to. And there's a real battle there. And you've got to come to the place where, you know, you're just, you're always dealing with the Lord as, as men. All you, all you men, uh, you know, you know, unless you're, I don't know, I was going to say unless you're a little kid. But even when I was a little kid, stuff was hitting my brain. I remember uh, I got a friend in another, in another province. And um, he was out with his son at the dump. And um, his son was a little boy. And his son came across some uh, child pornography. Uh, you know, he was just wandering around. And, you know, um, you know, dad was doing his thing. And the little boy was wandering around. And, and this would have been probably um, 20 years ago. And he came across some child porn in the dump. The little boy did. Of course, his dad didn't know what was going on. You know, you know, Johnny's just taught wandering around. Uh, he was about eight years old or so, and um, and that that ignited something. And and nobody knew until about sixteen years later. And, you know, some of that stuff, you know, it's, it's almost demonic. I, I, you know, I don't understand all that stuff, but, but something was lodged in his heart. And he never dealt with God about that. I, I don't understand all that. He grew up in a good church. He heard tons of preaching, you know, and, and but you, you know how that goes. Um, there's a lot of us in here tonight as men that there's things that we saw years ago that, that still bothers things that we, you know, you know, you're, you're. I mean, you haven't thought about it, and all of a sudden, it just comes out of nowhere. You know, you wish you could remember Scripture like that. But you never forget some of that other stuff. you got to be careful with your eyes. Proverbs 6, verse 23. Proverbs 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. 
Neither let her take thee with her eyelids, for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Lust not after her beauty in thy heart. Look at Numbers 33. Numbers 33. You, you young men in here tonight and, uh, you know, and, and you parents, you know, you, you know, I, I, I think you want the right thing. I think most of you do. You, you want the right thing. You want your kids to grow up. You want them to serve the Lord. You want them to be used. You know, you would you would consider it a wonderful thing. I mean, if if God made them a, a great witness for himself, whether that be a, a pastor or a missionary, or whether it just means he's just a great witness, you know, just in his daily life, you would like that. Um you know, you you want your your young person to be used even at church. You know, and um, you want them to um, be a tool in God's hand. But if this isn't right, it kills all that. I mean, they can still stand up. You know, they can still stand up and sing. You know, and 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 they can make it look good and all that stuff. But if they're if if this isn't right, you know what God's doing. God's just letting them do their, God's letting them perform, but he, but he's not using them. Look at uh, Numbers 33, verse uh, 50. Numbers 33, verse 50. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab. Numbers 33, 50. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and notice, and destroy all their pictures. You know, that thing of, of stuff that you see and stuff you see on the internet and all that, you know, that's not a new thing. Yeah, you know, it's always been a problem. And the children of Israel are getting ready to go into Canaan land. And, um, and God said, uh, you know, when you get over there, he said, you're, you're going to see stuff painted. You're going to see images of things. And, uh, and God said, make sure you destroy the pictures and the pictures, you know, you know, that's the media, you know, I mean, they, they didn't have electronic media. They just had stationary media. They just had, you know, paintings and all that, you know, um, but that was their media. That was their media. Um, destroy the pictures, destroy the pictures. Um, you know, you, you, you guys have got to do something. You've got to do something. You know, I see it and I see it with good people and, uh, and, and, and I've, I've, I've been part of it, but, but there is a real problem. And the devil is just, he's just, you know, he never lets up. He's just, he's just a master of deception and destruction. And he knows what he's doing. And you know, he, he gets you on your, on your phone, you know, or on your screen and you're watching reels, you know, and, and, and you're, you have no intention of seeing anything bad. You know, you're just, you just want to see some, some funny stuff and there's some hilarious stuff on there, no doubt. Um, but all of a sudden you're flipping down through, flipping down through and boom. And there's uh, you know, Barbie, you know, she's shown her before and after picture of how she's lost 300 pounds. And, and of course she's got to show it in a bikini and you just see it's, it's just, boom, just, just, and you, she, you shoot past it or you're, 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 you're checking something out and all of a sudden, you know, uh, all of a sudden the, the, the next video pops up or you've got that running thing on the side where it shows, you know, it just, it just endless. And it's just this, it's just this peekaboo thing, you know. You know, you weren't there to see it, you had no intention of seeing it, and all of a sudden the devil goes. And you know what he's doing? He's just he knew he knew you wouldn't go hunt for it. Now, now some people do, of course, but that's after he's already got them hooked and the fire is raging out of control. But long before that ever happens, he's trying to get them. And he, he knows, he knows just, and you ladies, you, you know, you, and, and it's wild. Even, even, even ladies are involved in this now. And, but 
but you ladies, you don't understand the power of that nude shot or that half nude shot. Like you just have no idea. And it just, boom. You got to do something. What are you going to do? You're going to have to figure out something. Because if you keep it and you, you get to the place where you start tolerating that. You know, first it bothers you. And then you get to where you tolerate it. And then, then it's a little more. See, the devil, he never stops and he moves forward by little increments. And you know, he doesn't mind if he's, he, he's not necessarily going to land you in a strip joint. Now, if he can take you there, he will. But the, he may not get you there if he can just get you to the place where you're regularly grieving the Holy Ghost. Then you're of no use to God. None. And that's if, if, if he'll settle for that. He, he doesn't have to drag you into a strip club if he can just get you to where you're useless for him. He'll settle for that. He'll settle for that. So I, I just you're, you're going to leave here tonight. And I, I hope this question goes real deep in your head and your heart. What are you going to do? You got to do something. I had a friend, my respect went up for him. And I don't, I, you don't have to do this, okay? Um, and, and I've still got an Apple phone, okay? I, I still have one. Um, but I have a friend that um, I don't know if he was having difficulty. I, I don't know what was happening, but he's a sharp dude. Like he, he, today, he's a lawyer, Christian guy from a great church, loves the Lord. I mean, he loves the Lord and uh, great guy, sharp as they come. And um, he's a lawyer. And you know what he did? He got rid of his iPhone and just got a flip phone. You know why he did that, don't you? Nobody does that unless you got a good reason. He did that because he didn't want to keep getting flashed. And he, he is just, it was, he knew it was going to kill him. He knew it was going to kill him. Don't look. But it's hard not to look when it, this is going. It's hard not to look. You say, oh, I didn't look for long. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. You're going to have to do something. Yes. You're going to have to do something. You're, parents, you're an absolute fool if you stick a phone in their hand that has... Um, you know, all the internet access and all that stuff. It, yeah. you, you, you're you just out of your mind. You've got to do something. Don't look. So, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that, you, you know, it's everywhere. It's hard to avoid, is, is it not? It's hard to avoid. I mean, it's at the mall. And, and here's, here's, how, here's where people go with that. See, the devil, the devil knows if he can give you a lame argument, if your heart's crooked, you're going to run with that lame argument. Well, pastor, it's everywhere. Sure, it's everywhere. Drugs are everywhere. But I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have crack cocaine in my house. Sure, it's everywhere. Yep. But I don't have to have it in my house. Yes. You know, God can give grace for the things you can't control, but He expects you to do something about what you can control. Yeah. And parents, you got to be careful with your little guys. You're walking through some of the stores, you know, and and there's just some places where, and I, I know, I know, perhaps there's times when it's unavoidable, but you're gonna have to do something. You know, you know, there's there's places you're you're crazy. To let your kids wander through a store because of what they can see. Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny's in my hair. Let's, oh, we're at Walmart. Okay, you're at Walmart, you know. Oh, let's let him, let's let him dig through the pile of the DVDs. That'll keep him busy. Do you know what he's gonna see on those covers? You say it's Walmart. Have you ever looked at the ones at Walmart? Some of them are innocent and some of them are terrible.
Look at Proverbs 5. Proverbs 5. Don't look. Don't look. If you young men can get a hold of this, 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 I, one of the devil's number one schemes of 2024, and he's more on the hunt than ever before. One of his number one agendas is to capture the eyes of the young men. Uh, about, about women too. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Except I know it's evil and it's demonic and people get sucked into stuff. And, you know, and even the, even the sodomite thing among the ladies is dramatically on the, on the rise. And you say, well, pastor, I gave an illustration um, Sunday night about how, what was going on in some of our kind of churches. It was unbelievable. Um, I got a friend who was in a, in a northern community and he, he no longer lives there. But he was up way up in northern Manitoba, and he was in one of those um, a fair sized town for northern Manitoba. It was like twenty thousand people, and he's there. And on the side, he would he would uh, fix people's computers if if the computer had a bug in it or if it got a virus. So these old ladies would bring their computers into him. He said, "You would not believe what I found." on old ladies' computers. So people just look at you like, oh, pastor, those poor people, we would never do that. You know what? Some of you, I'm sure you never would, but you would be shocked to find out what some people in church look at. Don't look. Look at um, Proverbs 5, verse 7. Proverbs 5, verse 7. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Now, in, in this chapter, he's been talking about, uh, you know, this evil woman and, you know, the strange woman, and, and she's... She's kind of the strange woman in Proverbs is just a real loose woman who's trying to seduce men. Okay. Look what it says in verse eight. Remove thy way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strange. All of a sudden, somebody else is in charge. Somebody else is running your life. Lest thou give thine honor unto others in thy years. You'll, you know, if you don't get a hold of that stuff, you're going to lose years. You're going to lose your honor. You know, I, I think there's a God-given piece of honor that God gives to every person and every person that follows him. You know, there's just something about that. That person that lives for God. If any man love God, the same is known of him. And there's just, you know, you go to Romans 16, you got that honorable mention list. and There's just a little piece of honor that God gives and and, and um, God says, if you, if you go down this road, God says, you're going you're gonna to lose that honor. You're going to lose it. You're going to get a bad name. Look at Luke's, I mean, you're in Proverbs. Um, look at chap, Proverbs 6, verse 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can you play around with this stuff and it not hurt you? Can verse, verse 27, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burnt? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. It's, it's that, that same thought, you know, um, um, you know, in the book of Job, and we looked at the passage not too long ago, Job 31, Job talks about this thing. And Job is, of course, in the midst of his trial. And he says, you know, he's in Job's three friends were tormenting him, you know, and they're accusing him of everything. And he says, he says, I am not guilty of. And, and he's one of the things he says, I'm not guilty of. He says, I'm not guilty of of laying wait at my neighbor's door, trying to get to my neighbor's wife, trying to trying to plunge into that immorality. And he says, 
for it is a heinous crime. He says it's a terrible crime to be punished by the judges. It is a fire that would root out all mine increase. Um, you know, it's like um, you've seen the pictures from um, Fort Mac and, you know, and, and some of you have been places where there's forest fires. And um, you know what that stuff is? It's it's like um, it, it lights a fire inside. But you know what happens? It's like a it's like a raging fire. And once that thing gets raging, you know, it just it just destroys everything good. Don't look. The day, you know what the devil does? You know what the devil does? He goes, he goes. You know, I don't have my phone. Oh, look. Oh, look. Now, remember where you saw that. You can check it later where nobody's around. Don't look. Those two words could change your whole life. Don't look. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Now, this thing's going to have to go deeper than your willpower. Okay. In Luke 6, 47, you know, the, the Lord says, um, he says, he that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken to a man that built a house. And it says, and he digged deep. You know, um, it, it would be wonderful. I, 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 I really, I, I think you're, it would be wonderful if your willpower was enough. But um, there's two sides to this. There's your side and there's God's side. There's your side and there's God's side. Would you look with me real quick at a couple of verses? Look at 1 John chapter 5. 1 John 5. First John five and look at verse 18. First John five, verse 18. We know. First John five, 18. We know that whatsoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not. David said, I will, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. There is, there is your side. You know, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. You know, there is your side. There is my side. You know, there is, there is that, that thing in you where, you know, you make some decisions and you say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm not going to go here anymore. I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, if I need to get a flip phone, I'll get a flip phone. I'll, I'll do whatever I got to do. You know, God honors that thing when you really get serious about you're going to do what, whatever you got to do. There's just some, if I offend thee, heaven forbid, pluck it out and cast it from thee. If thine hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. And we always say, well, that's really extreme. Well, and you know, it is extreme. And what the Lord's trying to illustrate is, he said, you know, you might have to get extreme to fix the problem. I had a friend that drove truck and the only time I ever rode in an 18 wheeler and uh, he's a Christian guy, great, great friend. We were, I was in my late twenties and we were about the same age and they went to a sister church, just, just like this situation. And, and, um, uh, he said, Joe, he said, why don't you and Mitzi and, and your babies come over and we'll visit. And he said, uh, he said, I do a night run on the truck. And he said, you can ride with me. And he says, it's just, he said, we'll be in the truck all night long. I said, man, that sounds like fun. Well, not cause I wanted to be up all night long, but it was fun because, you know, I was going to be with the brother. I was going to be doing something I never did before. And I jumped in the truck and, and he made several stops during the night, man, about five o'clock in the morning. We were both, you know, bleary eyed. and He had to pull over and sleep for a few minutes and all that stuff. But, but later he, I saw him and I said, I said, so Ron, I said, uh, you still driving that truck? He said, no. I said, did, did you get laid off? He said, no. I said, what happened? He, he was making good money. He said, brother Joe, 
He said, my weakness is bad music. He said, that's my weakness. And he said, I'd be driving that truck all night long. And he said, nobody in the truck with me. And he said, I'd listen to music that I knew was wrong, stuff from my old life. He said, I'd listen to that. He said, he just, he just, he said, and I, and I, I tried not to, and I tried to convince myself. See, he tried to do his part, but there's got to be more to this than your willpower. He said, finally, I realized I can't do this by myself. And he said, I knew the only way out was to quit this job and find another job where there was no radio. He said, how in the world did you do that? Oh, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. He got extreme, but he wanted to be right with God. God looked down, man. I bet God looked down and said, Gabriel, come and look at this. This dude's serious. Let's bless him. There's your side. And then there's God's side. Look at Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Don't look. You know, I bet there's a lot of men and there's a lot of marriages. Oh, my soul. How many marriages? You know, all of a sudden, you know, it's going good. It's going good. And then, then the wife finds out. And boy, you know, it, it's just for a lot of marriages, it's never the same after that. Now, can they can they ride through that? Can they can he get it right? Can they can they can they get past that? You know, the grace of God can get you past anything in the work of the Holy Ghost. But the fact is that most of the time it devastates the marriage. And many of those marriages, as soon as she finds out, it's done. And you know what he did? Did he step out on his wife? Did he go out with another woman? No. She just found out he was looking. And it cost him. You know, there was a day when she looked at him and she just had that look. Oh, man. Some of you men, you know what that's like? That, that woman looks at you and, and she, you, you know, you're, you hung the moon to her. And she looks at you. There's no look like that. But, boy, if she ever finds out you're looking around on, and you're looking at that stuff, that look is gone. Don't look. The devil's got a plan. If he can just get you to look. He, he'll take you all... He'll take you all the rest of the way if he can just get you to look. There's God's side. And, and let me say this. Let me say this. Yes. Is everybody in this room spotlessly perfect? Of course not. Uh, it, have we? Have we uh, but, you, but guys, you know what I'm saying. And it, yeah, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and he is. So, you know, I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say there's no hope here, but I am saying this. You know, there's men and women in here that have looked at things. And, and here's the problem. It's um, every time it just gets a little easier. And the devil's setting you up for the kill. I'm not saying if, if you're guilty tonight, I'm not... I, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying there's your side and there's God's side. And if you've got trouble tonight, I, I would say this. Every man, you know, you know, uh, unless there's something wrong with him, he's got, he's got, you know, you get, you get 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and God knows. And we've all got a boatload of testosterone flowing through our body. And, um, and you know what? There's your side and there's God's side. And God will help you. And have, have you failed? Yes. Have, I, is anybody going to stand here? Let him that is without sin cast the first stone. I'm not trying to paint anything as hopeless. But I am saying this. If you want hope, you got to deal with God about what you're looking at. If you'll deal with God, He'll give you hope. But you got to go to Him or there's no hope. That's what I'm trying to say. You got to go to him, but there's no hope because it's flooded. It's everywhere. There's your side, but what are you going to do? You're getting flooded with it. I'll tell you what, look at, look at uh, there. Psalm 56, 
Psalm 56, verse 13. I love this verse. Psalm 56, verse 13. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. He has, hasn't he? Saved your soul. He has saved our soul from death. And then David said, Lord, he says, you've you saved me from eternity. For eternity, will thou not deliver my feet from falling? Lord, I need your help right now. Lord, I, I, you took care of eternity. Now, Lord, you, you can do, you can take care of eternity. Can you help me now? Wilt thou deliver my feet from falling that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Lord, so that I can serve you and I can walk with you and I can be right with you and the birds are singing in my heart and my conscience is clear. Lord, would you deliver my feet from falling? Lord, you saved me. Now, Lord, I need you to do, Lord, I need you to do a lot more. Look at Psalm 116. Psalm 116. David says something very similar in Psalm 116, verse 8. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. He gave the credit. He said, Lord, he said, in one place he's asking God to help you. In another place he's thanking God because he did it. Look at Psalm 119. You're real close there. Psalm 119, verse 37. Now, in this verse, David's praying. Okay, David's praying. So, see, you got your side. You got your part, but God's got his part. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna accomplish this. You know, you're you're no match for what the devil's gonna throw at you. You're no match. It's, it's, and you might be the most wonderful, strong-willed, decided person on earth, but you know, there's gonna be a moment in your life where you're just you just hit that spot where you're weak and you've been bombarded and um and you know what? You're going to need a whole lot more than just you. Look at Psalm 119, verse 37. David prays, and I love what he says here. He says, Lord, turn away, verse 37, turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. He said, Lord, he said, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, I turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. You know, we hear about the, the Satanists and the witchcraft stuff, and, uh, you know, and, and you'll hear about how they have their, they're, um, and I, this is all hearsay because I don't study this stuff because that's a really bad place to go. Okay. But, but you do hear this stuff, you know, you know, they, they have their prayer meetings too. They have their things too that they do. And, you know, you'll hear about all this stuff they do and they want Satan to possess them and, uh, and, uh, you know, do his thing. And, you know, I go to God and I say, now, Lord, Lord, the devil's crowd they they're asking for the devil's help. And, and Lord, Lord, I'm asking for your help. Lord, I know you're good. And if they can ask, Lord, surely I can ask. Lord, he's saying, turn away mine eyes. He, he's not asking for God to do something, you know, and make him a zombie. But David's saying, Lord, it's got to be more than me. You know, the devil, the devil worshipers, you know, I don't know if they say this, but, you know, there's enough, you know, you know, possess me, you know, and all that stuff, you know. You know what, uh, you know what David's saying? He's saying, Lord, he said, Lord, I want you to so be in the center of my being that you are in control. And he says, Lord, I want that power and that strength that comes from you. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. Psalm 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Right here in this verse on 37. Psalm 119, 37, look at the second part of the verse. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in the way. That word quicken is an amazing word. It shows up 11 times in Psalm 119. And quicken means, Lord, make me come to life. Make me alive. He's praying. Now, David knew what to do. David knew the law. David loved the law. 
But that wasn't enough. He said, Lord, I got a problem. And he said, I know my problem is me. And he said, Lord, I want you to quicken me. I want you to touch me. I want you to, I want your power to come into my soul. And I want you to make me alive for thee. That's what he prayed. Look at Proverbs 6. We're almost done. Proverbs 6. You know, it's good when you've got a problem. It's good. Uh, like, you know, and it might not be in this area. It might be in some, it might be in some other area. You know, and, but it's an area that you really have a weakness in. You know, you just really have trouble with it. Um, you know, it'd be good for you to go, go alone to God secretly and just, uh, you know, just, just set aside an hour and just talk to God and say, now, God, Say, no, Lord, I don't have any trouble with shoplifting, Lord. It doesn't even bother me. And, Lord, I, I don't have trouble with murder. I, I, I haven't thought of murdering anybody for a long time. And, and, you know, Lord, I don't have any trouble with cussing. Lord, I don't have an ounce of trouble with that. And, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm pretty patient. I don't have any trouble with my temper. But, oh, God, you know I have trouble right here. And Lord, there's something in me. That's why I said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin, which does so easily beset us. And you know what you might have to do is you might have to get along with God on a regular basis and just say, Lord, you know, I'm going to do what, what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to, I'm going to do all I can, but Lord, I, I invite you, Lord, to work in my being. Lord, I want you to conform me to the image of your son. I want you to work in my thoughts and in my mind. Lord, I'm inviting you to help me. Lord, and just just, just talk to the Lord and talk to the Lord. And, and you know what? You know what the Lord will do? That's, that's part of his will, is to conform you to the image of his son. He will answer that prayer. You, how many people, I wonder, how many people ever get along with God on a regular basis and talk to God about their weakness? Now, Lord, I sure would, sure would like to have ten thousand dollars next week. You know, Lord, I'd, I'd really like a new car, or, or, or Lord, uh, you know, whatever. Do you ever talk to God about your weakness? For most men, most men have various weaknesses, but this is a big one. Do you ever talk to God about it? How do you think you're going to make it all the way home if you don't talk to God about this? And you're not going to win. You're, you're not, you know, you're not going to win the battle every day of the week. But you know what? A just man follows seven times and riseth up again. And I tell you what, God is interested in. God is interested in helping you. God is interested in making you holy. God is interested in you glorifying Him. I mean, you start pleading with Him about your weakness, and He's going to help you. He's going to help you. Look at Proverbs 6, verse 16. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And you guys know the list. It goes on down, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devised. There, look at verse 18. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. You know what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5? He said, casting down imaginations, casting down imaginations, guys. Um, and this all goes together, but don't look. Because the next thing you know, you'll be somewhere and you'll be bored and, and you'll start devising wicked imaginations. I think for most men, that is a fierce spiritual battle. I want you to look at 1 John 2. And this is the last, uh, the last verse we're going to look at tonight, 1 John 2. You know, I, I saw the, uh, the it, was, um, it was an interview with Ted Bundy. And uh, some people say, you know, 
his conversion was a joke and 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 and, and it it probably was but ted bundy was a guy that um was famous for um grabbing a woman somewhere and he would carry her off somewhere and rape her and kill her and he had a whole string of these and finally they caught up with him and um his crimes were horrible. So I'm watching this interview. They let, uh, they let a certain group in. It was a religious group, and they let the group in to do the interview with him just a, just a few days before his, before his death sentence was carried out. Uh, he was um, given, I believe he was given a lethal injection. And um, so he sat there in shackles, and uh, boy, you seemed like a nice guy and in his right mind. And he was a very intelligent man. You know, some of these guys, you know, some of these guys, you know, wow, they're just whew, like they don't have a full deck. And so they're really, they're dangerous just from that standpoint alone. But, but this guy, this guy was really dangerous. You know why? He was so nice and he was so intelligent. And, um, and he claimed that he had gotten saved there in the prison not long before that. And uh, so, he started, you know, telling the interviewer, the interviewer was asking some questions about some of the crimes he committed and some of the things he'd done. And, and, um, and he talked about where it all started. Now, I, I know when I say this, hopefully, God willing, nobody in this room ever gets close to this, okay? And, and can I say it? Very, very few ever do. Very few ever do. But you know how he got started? The interviewer said, where did it all start? He said, well, he said, I was a young man. And he said, back then there, there was no internet. And he said, um, he said, I'd be wandering down through the alleys. And he said, I would find a dirty magazine in an alley. And he said, that's where it started. And, and even Ted Bundy said, and he said, I find it hard to fathom that what I had to hunt for in an alley is a button away today. You know where it started? He looked. You know what? You're probably not going to wind up there. But if you wind up divorced, it might be because you might look back and say, wish to God I'd never looked. But if you never get caught, and it never affects your marriage. 75 years from now, none of us will be in this room. We'll be in the presence of God. And you know what? He's going to have a talk with you about why you looked. And you'll wish you hadn't. So I just hope you'll carry two words away tonight, young men. Parents, you need to be watchdogs some of you are just absentee parents. You're just only too glad to get those kids out of your hair. Yep. And you're just paving the way for disaster in those kids' lives. I hope you'll carry away two words tonight. Don't look. Let's pray. Lord, it's a precious truth, but it's a terrible truth. Oh, dear God, we pray you would shower us with your mercy and your grace. We pray, Lord, that every one of us, Lord, you'd give us power from on high. Lord, I had him turn to the verse and never looked at it. God, you said to those young men in 1 John 2, those young men, that they were strong and they had overcome the wicked one by the word of God. And Lord David said, by the word of thy lips, I have kept, thee, kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Now, Lord, we've looked at your words tonight. Lord, in Jesus' name, help all of us, Lord, that the words of your lips will keep us from the paths of the destroyer. Lord, many of us, Lord, we are stained within, O oh God. But God, your blood has covered us. And we praise your name. Now, God, help us from this night, all of us, Lord. That, Lord, we give you all of our body, but, Lord, we give you our eyes. And, Lord, we give you our mind. And we give you our meditations. Now, Lord, we can do our part, and certainly you expect us to do it. 
But, oh, Lord, we welcome you. We love you. We know you are our help and you are our only hope. And, Lord, we pray that you would keep our feet from falling, Lord. You would help us. God, help us that we would begin to pray to you to keep us, Lord, that we might make it safely all the way home. Lord, help us. Help that one tonight that feels guilty. Lord, your spirit's convicting them. And, Lord, they're troubled. Lord, help them to come to you. Lord, you're going to welcome them if they'll just come humbly. Lord, help them to know that you are ready to receive them. And, God, help them to know that you are ready to help them, Father, and to keep their feet from falling. Lord, help us, God, in Jesus' name. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, just want to give you a minute in the silence to talk to the Lord. Lord, bless your people, we pray. God, bless what's about to happen, Lord, with these two youth retreats. Lord, we just pray that you would bless, Lord, wonderfully. Lord, we love thee. Lord, like we said, those Satanists, Lord, they sure invite your invite the devil's presence. Now, Lord, we, we want your presence, God. Oh, Lord, that you would come down. Lord, you are welcome among us. Lord, that you'd help us. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.